Hi, and welcome back to The Scripture Life. Today is Faith and Freedom Friday. My name's Lanita Downs, and it's 2022. Thank you, Lord. We finally finished the long but short year of 2021, and now we've started into 2022. Uh, we here at Scripture Life, we have real life situations happening and things going on that Sometimes happening causes things to change, but I hate that I wasn't able to get back with you guys ending out in 2021 uh, with faith and freedom. But here we are, 2022, uh, faith and freedom, Friday, Friday, faith and freedom. So um, this morning we did receive a message from our founder of the scripture life, just encouraging us as uh women of God and those that are a part of scripture life to just keep going and that God would allow, uh, give us a fresh fire. And so if you would, I encourage and pray that same blessing of fire upon you today, that the Lord will give you a fresh fire for 2022. Amen. As we continue to grow uh, in our faith again, I want to encourage you to be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Amen. So it's Faith and Freedom Friday, and we want to renew or and or and or establish our faith in Jesus Christ and Him alone. Come on. Hallelujah. Our faith is not in ourselves. Our faith is not in our abilities. Our faith is not in our jobs, nor is it in our husbands or our wives. Our faith is not in our children. It's not in our parents. It's not in our knowledge, but it's in our father. Our faith is in, is not in man, but our faith is in Christ, our Lord and savior. For without him, we are nothing, but with him, and through him are all things possible. Uh, Psalms 127 and 1. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that built it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman walketh, waketh in vain. Let's reflect over 2021. Think about your faith and where you were throughout 2021. Where were you, were you with your faith? What about your freedom and liberties in Christ? Could you say that they both flourished? You had faith that you trusted God, things you seen, or at least something that you were believing God to that would, would or could come to pass, something you were hoping for, if you did not have at least one thing in 2021, I want to encourage you today, this Friday in 2022, to get some things before the Lord that you can believe, begin to believe, that you can begin to have trust, complete trust in the Lord for. So we talk about faith and freedom and freedom is the power or the right to act, speak, or think without hindrances or restraints. So we want you to get some things that you are able to put before the Lord. It is a privilege and a right as a believer who profess faith in Christ to have freedoms and liberties separate from that of others in the world and or even in the body of Christ. So according to Hebrews 11 and 1 speaks, says, uh, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So faith is having complete trust or confidence. It's a strong belief in God, confidence, de dependence, and conviction. Come on. Faith is also a conviction. Thank you, Lord. If you will go with me, and again, we always encourage you to get your printed um, scripture. Always good to read the word, to read it for yourself. But whether you're able to read along with us, we definitely thankful and grateful 
that you've chosen to even tune in to us and whether you're driving or able to go along with us. Thank you for listening as we go through the scripture here at Scripture Life. All right. Hebrews chapter three, and we're going to be going from verses, uh, sorry, verses uh, one through 14. Hebrews chapter three, verses one through 14. And it reads, wherefore, holy brethren, wherefore, brethren, consecrated to God, holy in life and in conduct, wherefore, my holy, consecrated brothers and sisters, come on, that are partakers of the heavenly calling, that are members, contributors, agents, shareholders, associates of the heavenly vocation, which is our mission or our walk of life. Come on. Hallelujah. Profession to Christ. Who was faithful to him that appointed him as also Moses was faithful in his house. I need you to consider, think about, contemplate, examine, review, study, ponder, assess, evaluate. Weigh up, sum up your, our profession or confession in Christ Jesus. Come on. Who was faithful to him that appointed him? Will you be found faithful to him that appointed you? We don't call ourselves, but the Lord is he who calls us. Romans 8 and 28. And we know that in all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them who are called according to what? His purpose. And so we know that even in that calling, we're called according to his purpose. <clears throat> for this man was counted worthy. Um. I'm sorry, let me go back. Verse two, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. And so as Moses was faithful in all his house, wow. Uh, can we get to a place to where all our house be faithful? And I'm talking about our husbands, our wives, our children, everything or everybody, not everything, but everyone whom the Lord has made us responsible for. I'm believing God that not just me, but all my house be found faithful. And that's all the children that the Lord has entrusted or blessed me with to be found faithful. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses. And so we know that this man is Christ. For this man was counted more worthy, uh, was counted worthy of more glory than Moses Inasmuch as he who hath buildeth the house hath more honor than the house. For every house is builded by some man, but he that built all things is God. Again, we know that God is all things. For we know that uh, uh, Romans 10 and 17 so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so how can you be increased in your faith? How can you attain faith? It's by hearing the word of God. Things that the Lord did in scripture. We see here that uh, Moses was faithful and the things that happened because of his faithfulness. And so we too as believers want to find ourselves in a place to be faithful. Moses was faithful in all his house as a servant. He was faithful. Um, I'm sorry. Faithful is loyal. He was true. He was constant. He was devoted. He was unwavering. He was error free. 
He was true hearted as a servant, as an attendant, as a helper, as a steward. What about you? For a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after the Messiah would come. Come on. These are things, you know, that were spoken of that would happen after the Messiah <coughs> would come. Verse six. But Christ as a son over his house, over his own house, whose house are we? If we hold fast, if we tighten, if we fasten, if we attach ourselves, if we bond, if we stick to trust, belief, faith, our conviction in Christ, hold fast to the confidence, I'm still at verse six, and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. I want to, and so we're talking about holding fast to the end. And as I was reading and studying this, I was reading what Dakes had said, and I thought this was good and wanted to share it with you. Uh, five things we must do to the end. We must endure to the end to be saved. We must hold fast the hope of eternal life to the end. We must hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. We must show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope to the end. Come on. We must overcome and keep Christ's work to the end. And so these five things I thought were, you know, just really good the way he broke them down. Uh, he also gave scripture for endure to the end to be saved. Uh, Matthew 10 and 22, 24 and 13, and Mark 13 and 13. If you have a chance to go back and read over those, uh, to hold fast to the hope of eternal life, to the end, Hebrews 3 and 6, even as we just read. Uh, hold the beginning of our confidence, steadfast to the end, Hebrews 3 and 14. We're going to get to that. And show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope to the end, Hebrews 6 and 11. Overcome and keep Christ's work to the end. Revelation 2 and 26. <clears throat> Verse 7, it says, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost said, today, if you will hear his voice. Wherefore, if, now wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith today, if you will hear his voice. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And this is. And we know that his voice is the voice of the Lord. It says, harden not your heart as in the provocation. So it's saying. Stiffen. Don't stiffen, don't strengthen, don't reinforce, don't toughen or deaden your heart as in the provocation to the pressure, to the urging, to the stimulation in the day of temptation, excuse me, in the wilderness. For we know the world that we live in today is considered like being in the wilderness. Verse nine, when your fathers tempted me, proved me and saw my works 40 years. Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation and said, they do always err in their heart and they have not known my ways. He here was offended with the, this generation. Now, what about our generation? What will we do in our generation? They have not known his ways then. And it seems as many people today still do not know his ways. Many people today profess they know him, 
but do not know his ways. Why is that? Why do so many people not know the ways of the Lord or the things that's required of us as believers? And this is why we have so many people seasoned and unseasoned falling away because so many people believe that they are okay. They believe that they can do, live however they've been convinced in some way, form or fashion. Um, I remember scripture uh, in Hebrew say, ye did run well, who hindered you that you obey not the truth. And so we as believers have to be mindful of our atmosphere. Um, the people we listen to, uh, again, we know you should know the voice of the Lord and be led of him and him alone. But we have to be careful um, of those things that comes to tempt us. Amen. Uh, verse 11, for it says, so I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. They shall not. Because of what? They didn't hold fast. Their hearts were turned to the things of the Lord. They allowed their hearts to be drawn away with the lust of the world, with the things of the world, to go against the things that God has required us to do or called us to do. Verse 12. <clears throat> Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. Take heed. Listen, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Take heed. Brethren, sisters, lest there be in any of you an evil heart heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Uh, Dakes gives seven stages of apostasy and apostasy is the departing from God. Is one is refusal to hear. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to mention this other thing. And so he also said when we were talking about the five things we must do to the end, it also goes to say, for this reason, because there is danger of falling, of failing to hold fast to the hope of eternal life until the end, the Holy Ghost here warns Christians, not sinners, to take heed, seeing to it that they do not fail God as many in Israel did and were cut off. And so again, we want to be found faithful. We want to be able to hold fast to the provocation, to the mission, to the calling wherewith God has called us. Each of us, he has called. We all are one body, but different members. We all have different callings, but do that which the Lord had called you to do. Work that to the fullest, to the end. Hallelujah. It says, take heed. Listen, brothers and sisters. And so, we know that uh, refusal to hear God is, is part of that. Uh, two, hardness of your heart through refusal to hear God and obey God uh, in verse eight. Unbelief, a consequence of hardening your heart against God. It says, verse uh, for number four is depart from the living God. Number five is open rebellion against God to provoke and or tempt him. Number six is habitual sinning, careless living, and flagrant violation of God's laws. And number seven is apostasy. All faith in God and his redemptive work thrown overboard beyond all hope of repentance because of no more faith. This is further proof that Christians are referred to. Sinners are not advised to. I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead of myself. And so we are to take heed to the things. Take heed. Listen. Don't be the one that is refusing to hear from the Lord. And then not only that, 
just refusing to hear from the Lord. There's a body of Christ. We are the hands and the feet and the mouth of Jesus. And sometimes he will use your brothers and sisters to speak a word of life to you, to speak a word of direction, to speak a word of correction to you. And I advise you and admonish you as believers, brothers and sisters, pray about it. Because those things that the Lord would even speak to um, your brother or sister, he will confirm it within you. Now, <clears throat> there are times that our flesh will want to deny it, not agree with it, not adhere to it. But does not mean that the Lord is not speaking that to us? It says uh, back at the end of 12, um, least there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. And so if you have any part of unbelief, he said it's the evil heart of unbelief. And so pray that the Lord help you with any of your unbelief. I know we're living in a day and an hour where it seems like so many things can appear to almost have victory over us over the things that we profess. But God has the last and final say. And no man, no power will triumph over his. Come on. 13, but exhort one another daily. Exhort is to encourage, to urge, to charge one another, to push one another to be it one another, to admonish one another, to advise one another. It's also to warn one another daily while we have a chance, while we have the possibility. While it is called today, At least any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. This may be the last chance or possibility in order of any of us being desensitized, deadened, irredeemable through the deceitfulness of sin. We have to be mindful, brothers and sisters, to not become desensitized to the works of darkness, to the things that tempt us to sin, these the, we're living in the last days and these are the hours and the days of the times where we cannot allow temptation to overtake us we have to be steadfast unmovable to the things that we profess we believe come on this is not the day and the hour to give in to your flesh, to give in to the temptation, to allow <clears throat> the things in the world to lure you and come against the things that you once professed, once believed to the things that are of Christ. Verse 14, for we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. For we are made partakers of Christ, for we are members of the body of Christ, if we hold fast the beginning of our confidence steadfast until the end. Remember, <coughs> the beginning of our confidence or our faith, trust, Belief is in Christ. And if we hold fast to that until the end, we will be saved. Not just we, but, it, but we and our house, says the scripture. That's faith and freedom 101. Come on. If we have complete trust in who he is, his work, his rising, that's faith. Have faith and believe and trust he 
that he can and that he will and that he can keep you. Hebrews 11 and 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please what? Who? Him. For he that cometh to God must first believe and believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that what? Diligently seek him. This is faith. Will you be found with being faithful, loyal, constant, true, devoted, unwavering? Will you be found faithful in 2022? Let's be faithful even the more for 2022. Let's be found faithful, people of God. Scripture says Moses was faithful in his house. Scripture told us to exalt one another daily. Let's urge people to be faithful. Be in your word. Let's be faithful to the provocation, to the mission, to whatever it is that God has called you. Let's be found faithful even the more for 2022. That's Faith and Freedom Friday. Again, having faith gives you freedom and it gives you liberties. Let's be encouraged, people of God. Thank you guys for tuning in. Tune back in as um, we have uh, many things planned for uh, 2022. We are also uh, moving to a podcast. Um, again, uh, we invite you guys to join us in a fast this year. Well, we started at the beginning of this year, but if you're not pray, the Lord will give you direction and even fasting. Uh, we know that some that scripture says these kind cometh not by, by fasting and praying. We know that fasting is essential to the believer. Um, we encourage you to come alongside us, grow with us spiritually and naturally, uh, because we learn to do some things in the natural sense. Um, and again, uh, with scripture life, we have, uh, we will be moving to not moving, but adding podcasts. Uh, we also have some scriptural videos at times that, uh, you may be going through some things that you can listen to, to encourage you. Uh, throughout your day, some healing, um, pro professing scriptures that you can listen to, quote along, speak over yourself, um, share with others. Uh, we will be having uh, some other uh, scripture life, scriptures spoken throughout the year. Uh, we do plan on, and I'm calling us out, um, having a conference if you already have it. I uh, heard, heard the sisters uh, talk about it or share. We do plan on having a conference this year um, as the Lord will lead us and even or allow us. But uh, we thank you for joining your time with us. This is the beginning of the year. We are expecting great things for scripture life. <clears throat> Not just even for scripture life, but we expecting great things in your life. We want to walk alongside you even as you're believing God uh, in your in your life for things to come to pass. We want to join alongside with you. Again, thank you guys for tuning in today. Faith and Freedom Friday. My name's Lenita Downs. See you next time.